Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Sam Webb, one of the brains behind the spy game. Um, I'm very excited about this. I'm a huge Ninja and Super Spies fan from way back in the days. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I, everyone loves spy, spy novels, spy thrillers. I've been a fan of uh, the spy genre for uh, a, a long while as well. Um, like growing up with like James Bond movies, uh, probably starting off with Goldeneye in the 90s uh, as a kid then. And then um, just not not being like a crazy kind of zealot with this encyclopedic knowledge, but I've certainly enjoyed watching everything from uh, Atomic Blonde uh, and like Red Sparrow and stuff to even the earlier James Bonds and uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, I've really enjoyed the genre and uh, been tabletop role playing for uh, a good while now, just over a decade. and. Uh, was always a fan of the games that were coming out uh, around the kind of early noughties that were uh, kind of, you know, playing on that riff. Uh, modern games, uh, D20 Modern, the spy, uh, was it Spycraft as well? That kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, so, so setting wise, looks like this, this goes all over from classic James Bond to Metal Gear Solid, things like that, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. The idea was that it was a toolkit. So you can use it for whatever kind of spy uh you know genre that you want whatever kind of spy adventures you want to play um and uh, we kind of put a loose together setting together for it as well so we uh kind of as a more of a style choice for for writers that we were going to come in and have a uh, guest write for us and certain agencies and stuff uh basically the idea was that it would be set kind of tomorrow so you've got a bit more technology than you have kind of nowadays. Um, it was certainly the way I briefed it was like, it's the stuff that maybe uh, news reports are talking about now is kind of, you know, what could what could be in place tomorrow, you know, medical advances, uh, maybe military advances, um, all that kind of slightly tomorrow tech that you see. And I was very clear that just it, it wasn't a uh, cyberpunk or something like that. It was very much just, you know, imagine what we could have Kind of quote unquote tomorrow so we've put together that in combination with uh, the idea that there is a bunch of mercenary uh, clandestine organizations like agencies um a bit like if you watch archer um there you've got different kind of uh literally little companies that are basically spy companies um and we put that together as well because i thought that would work probably best with a group of five or so players who have their own agency and they want to go off and kind of do what they want rather than being tied down to a certain government or a certain government kind of organization. Although that's on the cards too. We've got a few a couple of pages on that as well. So a whole whole plethora of stuff of, of ways to play basically. Okay. Now I know you're using the 5e uh, uh, open gaming uh, system for this game. Um, uh, so I'm sure there's no species like elves and dwarves and things like that. Um, <laughs> but but classes, what classes do you have available for this game? So I didn't want to stray too far from people, what people can recognize from 5e. So there was just a little bit of adaptation and a little bit of modernization for some of them. So there will be some recognizable classes uh, like the ranger um, and then fighters just kind of turned into the soldier. Uh, and I've had to adapt it so it's a bit more about ranged uh, combat because it's so much more about ranged combat nowadays. Um, but then I've also taken up and kind of tried to really kind of play with a couple of the classes um, or come up with my own. So we've got a couple of quite unique classes to the game called the face and the, info, uh, the uh, technician. Um, and so the face is like because the face is that kind of trope archetype, isn't it? Mm. With like a D&D &D group you might have. Um, it's the person that talks to everybody. It's the kind of, maybe the, the player with a bit more confidence um, who tends to role play out and act out what they want to say to all of the NPCs and they want to talk to everybody. Um, so I kind of put that into the class. So the idea is that the face is that kind of, maybe kind of con artist or kind of Darren Brown kind of figure who um, can uh, perhaps manipulate people, misdirect people, um, or they're just, they're just great lies or great persuaders either way. Um, and so the, the class was built around that and built around kind of using your uh, charisma to get in places and infiltrate places, be in disguise, do all that kind of cool stuff as well. And then the, yeah. And then the technician is about um, having lots of cool gadgets 
So rather than your kind of class features being something inherent to you that you um, can do, it's more about the stuff that you've built and you kind of modify um, that you have around you. So, you know, you're going to be like working really closely with the tech services of the agency you're in um, to have all the cool stuff, but they're your own gadgets. Um, and I use quite a few little kind of uh, mechanically based things from, I think the Sorcerer from 5e where it's, you've got uh, points that you can use to modify your tech, to give you more tech um, and to uh, pass around to the other group, uh, others in the group. Um, so it was a it was a fun one to do as well, and it's a kind of a slightly newer take on uh, one any of the kind of classes that you might be more familiar with. I think. Okay, so let's talk about the combat system um, and skill checks um, in the game. So obviously you have to change some things around. What where would you say some of the, the more um, different changes that you had to do for for this game? So some of the easier changes were just about essentially renaming a few of the skills and slightly respecking them. So um, gone, obviously, the kind of arcana um, and that kind of thing. But you've got stuff like uh, infiltration. Um, you've got stuff like uh, espionage itself, which is all about information gathering and kind of using appropriate sources and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then we've got some tactics as well in there for um, some of the more uh, kind of tactically minded soldiers and the like. Um, and then I guess one of the more fundamental changes was um, adding a new phase to combat, uh, which I called the infiltration phase. So it's just a, it's a way I think for GMs particularly, uh, but also players to approach combat in a slightly more as asymmetrical way where you're not like you and me have got swords and we're just fighting each other. It's more like you've got guards on patrol and they have a certain kind of alertness to them uh, and they're walking around and, uh, you're trying to get into position and maybe set up an ambush and then have a surprise round or you might even be able to if you're the infiltrator get up behind them grab their gear like do a do a little choke hold get them to sleep or something you know um and actually take them out quietly without having to actually initiate a proper round of combat um taking a few cues from the games i really like from video games like uh xcom xcom 2 that kind of thing mm. where it's a bit more uh, isometric and you're moving around in turns and stuff so the player party have the opportunity to all act um, in their own um, in their own order, and then the NPCs act. So if you've got a patrol of guards, you could all wait. You could see where they're patrolling if you want to. The GM could kind of show you. Okay, well if you're just sitting tight for like a couple of minutes, then I'm just I'll just I'll show you where they would move around, and that's what their kind of repeated pattern is like. Um, you know, or you know you can decide, oh, actually, okay, so the infiltrator's gonna go first because they're gonna go over there. The medic's gonna hang back, so we'll leave them towards the last. And you get to decide between yourselves what turn in the initiative order you take, and then you've got all of the, the NPCs. Okay. Well, the most important thing about spies is their gadgets. You know, what's, what is Bond without gadgets? It's just not the same. Um, yeah. So for, for this book, what, what can um, uh, players and game masters expect to see? Like, how, how expansive is that in this book? I made sure that that was a big thing because like, you're absolutely right. So there's a whole chapter of awesome, fun gadgets that I definitely didn't rip off from all of the spy movies I could Google. Um, so there are all sorts of things like cyanide from, you know, like classics like cyanide cigarettes and stuff like that um, to some of the more funky, weird stuff like Fulton extraction things from like Metal Gear Solid. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. There's loads of different armor, loads of different weapons. Then you've got actual, you know, really cool spy gadget surveillance gizmos that is really fundamental to a lot of kind of espionage work that you might want to do. Um, everything from, and then, you know, you, you get to the kind of bigger stuff, like there's actually, uh, like you can call in like close air support and stuff as, as a gadget. So you can bring it in and go, actually, right, I want, I want to designate that target and it's going to, you know, launch down a, a like a kind of cluster bomb effect or something like that so there's a whole load of different stuff and that's what the technician picks from as well when they're actually picking their own personal gadgets so um i had a lot of fun writing that chapter actually it was it's good to research as well okay um when it comes to world setting and world building is this pretty much um usually when i think of spawn i always think of britain <laughs> um but uh is it is it just is it is it to take place mostly or kind of insinuate it should take place there or is it America? Is it uh, uh, around the world? What, what can you say about that? 
I, I obviously can only really write from my kind of Western perspective, but we had a few guest writers who um, ca who uh, can research uh, a bit. We have a, an agency from the Philippines, for example. Um, we have quite a few from America. We've got a couple of American writers on to guest as well, obviously. So um, what I didn't want to have was a very kind of either West versus East feel, a bit like some of the kind of Cold War dramas that you might get. Um, I also didn't want a kind of... Um, you know, for want of a better phrase, like first world, third world kind of uh, conflict as well. So while we styled the book in a kind of red versus blue theme, um, the idea is that you can be from anywhere, from any agency. And, uh, it, you know, I, I didn't want to pin people down. So it's very much an open question when you pick your background. What's your nationality? And that's, that's left uh, entirely up to you, to, uh, including the languages that you speak are entirely up to you um and so you can you can really build anyone from anywhere and i think that was very important for the game as well especially in this day and age mm. uh tell us about the art in the book uh what direction did you want to go what will be what direction will people see in the book exactly when it comes to the art so i wanted something that would be quite familiar to people i'm a big fan of has been just such a big uplift in uh, a lot of fan art that's coming through for stuff like critical role um, and for tabletop role playing in general. Um, I'm on Twitter quite a lot um, in terms of the tabletop community, just checking out what people are talking about and also posting a you know, <laughs> very little of what I'm, what I'm kind of doing. I should probably post some more to be fair. Um, but I absolutely love the artwork that's been coming through. And so what I did was I recruited from that pool of artists. So some artists that um, I know from working uh, at Modifius, um, but also uh, some artists that um, we just uh, spotted on Twitter and really like their stuff. I wanted a kind of um, slightly graphic novel style um, because that kind of leaned in a bit to a lot of the fan art I think we're seeing. And it was, again, it was a very recognizable kind of style I think that's coming out from the community. So that's the kind of direction I wanted to, uh, to take it in. And then one of the things to try and bring the whole book together from, obviously we're gonna have a lot of different artists working on the same book. And so their styles will all be slightly different, um, even with the art direction of kind of saying what kind of style we wanted to give. Um, and so what I did was just a very simple kind of color scheme thing where it might be that, you know, you've got, you know, you're in the set, the, the, the piece is in a forest or a jungle or something. So it is very green, but I made sure at every point that we had a bit of red, a bit of nice saturated red and a bit of nice saturated blue in there as well. So it got that kind of, you know, us versus them mentality when it comes to uh your kind of clandestine work like you know you, you're a team and your team is always kind of your family who you're dedicated to and there is an enemy um you know whatever kind of geopolitical situation it might be um so you know i use that to try and tie the whole book together so that all the pieces at least feel like they're all in the same kind of world i guess okay you, you bring up uh, my next question in a way uh, like so this is there like adventure seeds anything like that something to help game masters start a start the game in a way in this book yeah absolutely i'm really keen myself as a, a gm and a, a drama college kid um that there is a lot of um jumping off points and inspiration for uh, gms so um i made sure that i i wanted to put a lot of effort into a kind of running the game part of the book so it's not just the npcs and it's not just you know how to handle skill checks it's like uh you know here's a uh, a load of you know how to put together a mission here's uh what you could write for an npc you know and i'm a big fan of just putting together simple kind of structures for you to then have a, a platform to Im improvise off so i put a lot of effort into just kind of saying like you know just have some goals and motivations and some ideas about what the, you know, big bad's gonna look like, you know, the, the super villain um, if, uh, for your game, if you want one of those, um, so that, you know, you've got some uh, cool jumping off points, like I said, really. And then I think a lot of the uh, chapter, um, uh, I think it's agencies on the global stage, um, was well, basically the kind of the world of the spy game kind of chapter um, where we outline a lot of those um, agencies because we've come up with a couple, um, as I say, a bunch of guest writers also helped us come up with a load um, and they give you some really cool jumping off points. And we haven't framed those 
as this is a, this is a good agency this is a bad agency it's just this is an agency you could be them you they could be your big bad um and so uh, you know like i say it gives people a toolbox to work with i think that's pretty important so a fun question um why do you think the spy genre is so popular uh why is it that we keep coming back and want to see these stories i <laughs> Maybe this is just me, but I think a lot of the time when we see someone like kicking ass and like, you know, like we see like a Mission Impossible movie, like jumping or helicopters and stuff, or like if we see Atomic Blonde and she's fighting her way through like 20 dudes in an apartment building, a little bit of you thinks I could do that. Like I, if I, if I tried, if I like, if I worked hard and got and trained, like I could do that, that'd be really cool. And I think for, for a lot of people, uh, particularly say kind of maybe who are uh, new to tabletop role playing kind of maybe not such fans of the fantasy genre that you know I know I'm, I'm probably going to get uh, you know a lot of hate for this but like fantasy isn't my primary thing I'm not a massive fan of it I, I enjoy playing in it and I enjoy lots of kind of low fantasy games like Game of Thrones um, but kind of high fantasy stuff I'm not such a big fan of and it was sci-fi and kind of modern stuff that um, before I started tabletop role playing appealed to me more. So I think you can identify more, particularly if you're not coming from a kind of fantasy centric position, um, that you can identify a lot more with the, um, kind of protagonists or antagonists involved because, and that was the part of the, uh, the style and the writing that I was saying about, I wanted it to be tomorrow. I didn't want to be too distant in the future. I didn't want it to be, a uh, you know, a kind of, representing like an antique from like you know really early days of espionage in the modern world or kind of world war ii or just after or the cold war or anything like that i wanted it to be kind of feel a bit fresh and new and stuff like that so yeah i i basically i, I think people can uh get into it a lot easier like they know what a mobile phone is they know uh, you know what a helicopter and a you know jumbo jet is and stuff like that yeah, it's kind of like the uh, uh, Batman. Like everyone likes Batman because they can see themselves being Batman. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like hey, this could be very possible. You can't be Superman, uh, but no. Batman is a possibility. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so um, this was a successful Kickstarter. Um, uh, what's next? Are, are and where can people who didn't just heard about this book just now? Where can they go and get the book? Yeah. So the PDF's available right now um, as of the as uh, the time we're chatting um and if you just head over to blackcatsgamingshop.com uh you can get it right there and then we're also on drive for rpg if you head over there uh, you can grab the pdf there um and then we're going to be uh printing in the new year uh just because we're here a slight delay that with the printing partner um and then once we've got that out to our backers then it'll be available uh widely available uh, hopefully uh so yeah it will still be on our web store and stuff like that if you're watching uh, a little bit uh <laughs> later on from when we're recording um but yeah so that so in terms of what's next um well we've got some we've got some cool plans uh there is a little uh hidden little easter egg in the spy game book if you can find it to give you a clue of what's coming next uh i've also got a couple of uh fun ideas just for kind of you know two to four pager rpgs that you can crack out at a convention and just have some fun with so um i've actually i'm going to start just working on uh just play testing though to get the cobwebs out and then i'll uh get those out and into layout and hopefully out to people's people's hands soon as well excellent i'll i'll put a, a link in the description below um thank you sir for taking the time to talk to us about this really cool game uh, i can't wait to uh check it out myself yeah, and yeah. to our viewers out there um uh, thank you for watching and be safe. Have a great day.